<laughs> My name's Armando Rodriguez. I'm a professor in the electrical engineering department. Uh, and perhaps I should get started. Hmm. Uh, we will be discussing the various programs that, that we offer so that, you can, uh, so that we can assist you in mentoring uh, students and pretty much we provide money for you, students, etc. Uh, these programs will be discussed later on. I think I should tell you perhaps a little bit about myself so that you can perhaps uh, see where I'm coming from and, and uh, see my perspective. And, uh, and I've, I've been asked to do this uh, now several times. And every time it really is, it's an emotional thing for me because it's really opening up. It's very difficult to do. Uh, uh, out of all the things I do, I mean, why did I become a professor? Well, I love to do research. I love science, mathematics, engineering, etc. I love working on problems, working those problems. Uh, uh, trying to do original work that will be regarded by your peers nationally and internationally. That is just uh, very exciting. Uh, having said that, this activity that I uh, uh, pursue uh, a great deal, I think, is, is perhaps some of the most important uh, things, or it's a very important activity that I perform. I consider it to be one of the most important things that I do. Uh, and well, let me give you some perspective. Uh, I was born in New York City, and uh, uh, my my parents they immigrated to the United States in search of opportunity. Okay, they met in New York, and they had me, the oldest child. Uh, and I also had two younger brothers. Uh, oh, oh um, around the age of eight, nine, ten, so I was very well on my way to becoming a juvenile delinquent. I was born in New York City, right on the edge of Harlem and Washington Heights, and uh, you may be familiar with that, uh, the, the, the neighborhood. Um, uh, growing up in the 60s, the 70s, uh, those neighborhoods were, uh, uh, they were very well known for their very, very high crime rates, uh, drugs, etc., and so forth. So I was very well on my way to becoming a juvenile delinquent. That was the thing to do. Um, we didn't have baseball fields. Uh, oh, I should say I lived, uh, oh, about five blocks from Yankee Stadium. But that was this big thing that really had nothing to do with my life. Uh, and that, that, that is something, uh, that's just the way it happened. Uh, very well on my way to becoming a juvenile delinquent. Then there was a family tragedy. My mother, she passed away of cancer. At the time I was 12 years old, my brothers were five and six. My dad, who was a window cleaner and obviously did not have the skills uh, to deal with this situation, and, and quite honestly, I don't know who has the skills to deal with this type of situation. I certainly don't think uh, if I were in his, in his situation, uh, with everything I know, uh, I, I'm not, it's certainly a very difficult situation. And so what happened? Well, my dad, even though he had uh, first grade education, second grade, uh, he knew enough to know the importance of education. And so, it, to make a long story short, he, he, he pretty much said, look, you better get educated, otherwise I'm going to kill you. And, uh, well, he provided a little bit more than just, I'm going to kill you, just blind threats. Uh, what he provided me was with an individual. There was an individual in the neighborhood, Theodore Hugh Hernandez. He was a black man an educated man. Now, I, I may have a PhD from MIT in electrical engineering, but this, I don't consider myself a so-called educated uh, person in the, in the classical, traditional sense. This was truly a very well-rounded, 
educated man. He only had a bachelor's degree, but he was really an amazing individual. And my father pretty much said, if you've got questions, you go to Mr. Hernandez, and you better go or else. And, well, uh, I certainly listened to my dad because he was uh, kind of tough, and I was a little guy, and so, you know, I had to listen, right? Uh, but what made it work, of course, is Mr. Hernandez. Uh, Mr. Hernandez, he, he, he passed away. He passed away one year before uh, I received my PhD from MIT. Uh, he would be very upset that I'm still calling him Mr. Hernandez. For years and years, he said, hey, call me Ted, right? <laughs> uh, but he was just, uh, he understood how to mentor. He understood education. He understood how to reach me. Um, uh, I got in trouble a few times uh, with the law, and uh, he went to court once. And my mother was in the hospital, uh, dying of cancer. I did not know she was in the hospital for like a year and a half. I didn't know that she was dying of cancer. He understood, and he uh, tried to put me on the right course. And he, he really knew what, what to say and what to do. At the time, I had a passion for baseball. I just, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to play center field, not for the New York Yankees, but for the New York Mets. All right, uh, my hero at the time was Willie Mays, center fielder uh, for um, uh, the San Francisco Giants. He was my hero. And as for many kids growing up in these neighborhoods, many of the heroes are athletes. And well, certainly that's what you see on television and everywhere, and so why should I be any different? But Mr. Hernandez, uh, little by little, was becoming my hero. He was showing me uh, the way out. And those of you who, who know something about these types of neighborhoods, uh, uh, most of the kids, they don't have a way out. There is no hope. They're just, there is no hope. Uh, just recently on CNN, I think they, uh, they announced the um, uh, high school graduation rate in New York City, 50%. And you know, when I saw that, I, I know the numbers are bad, I've been following them, but, but when you hear that, it just, it just brings back those feelings and those memories and reminded me of... Uh, so many kids being lost. Well, okay. Uh, oh, I was also interested in boxing. You know, it, in, in that type of neighborhood, you have to uh, be able to defend yourself. And I got myself beat up so many times. Well, I eventually went into the ring because I needed to learn. And so I wanted to box. And then that was it. Mr. Hernandez had enough with me. He said, but what are you, an idiot? You can't do this. And uh, he showed me the path of education. He showed me that learning could be fun. I visited with him, and uh, it's amazing. He had just retired, and that's when I met him. And so it was just, he was just dropped on earth, I think, to save me and to, well, save a, a few other kids in the neighborhood. So, um, well, I chose education, and, and, uh, and then I, I went on, and, you know, well, went to college and got my bachelor's degree and went to MIT for graduate school and, and everything uh, was wonderful. And, and after, um, after getting my PhD, I joined the faculty in electrical engineering here at ASU. And these are some of my research interests. Uh, uh, I've worked on airplanes and robots and submarines and, and helicopters and missiles. And even though I can't play, um, center field for the New York Mets. I just cannot imagine a job that I would consider more fulfilling. Uh, and I've tried very hard really thinking of other things that I would like. Uh, there are lots of things that I would like. But this, I think, is a really special job. And I, I know that Mr. Hernandez had a great deal uh, to do with why I feel this way. Did you keep talking to him when you were at MIT? 
Yeah, I spoke with Mr. Hernandez every once in a while uh, while I was at MIT. He uh, wrote letters to me, and uh, I wish I had written more to him. I used to call him and visit him every once in a while. Uh, but he always was interested in what I was doing. And I, I mean, he was interested in what I was doing. You know, hey, se send me some equations. Even if he didn't understand them, he wanted to look at them. It was uh, an amazing relationship. Uh, 